for listening to this week's podcast. George D. Come talk with me. Well, hello there, darling. It is so good to see you, to hear you, to talk to you. It has been a serious minute since we have chatted. Sorry, I just brought the microphone a little bit closer to me. I am quite a bit... Sorry, all the moving on the leather makes these weird noises. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And my microphone is way too good now. And I do apologize in advance. And I'm a lot a bit out of practice with podcasting. I, no joke, have not podcasted since... October, the very beginning of October of last year, 2023. I'm super, super embarrassed. Very sorry. It's been a low-key almost a year. And, um, well, to be honest, it's been nine months. It didn't start because of my pregnancy, of why I didn't start not podcasting because of my pregnancy, but low-key, I got pregnant, I think, in October, found out in October. But, The ministry that I'm a part of has like a discipleship training that starts in in October and that is the main reason why I stopped podcasting last year. Uh, It is extremely busy around here at that time and it's really no excuse because that month is really busy but then after that it slows way down but I think I just was extremely tired because I was in first trimester throughout the winter and into second trimester. But um, to be honest, this in, like normally in pregnancy, well, normal for me, I've only had two kids, so I've only had two pregnancies. Well, that's not true. I have had seven pregnancies. Five. Yeah, seven pregnancies. But of course, the rest of all the babies died except Everest and Eden obviously but with this pregnancy with Eden um I had gestational diabetes not to overshare but yeah so I was extremely tired the entire entire time and I want to do a tangent because sometimes people have like this like stigma about gestational diabetes but honestly gestational diabetes only comes from your placenta I've heard that your placenta comes like the genetics or whatever come from the husband or the person you're married to or the person you had the baby with la 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 and um so you get your placenta and sometimes your placenta is really really good and sometimes it's not so good and if it's not good like everybody I mean I could be wrong about all this but what I understand is that everybody's placenta has some version of diabetes because your placenta is meant to have that um please correct me if i'm wrong like comment below comment on the on the you know ratings or whatever whatever or on instagram or text me or whatever but like from what i know everybody that is pregnant has some version of diabetes or you can call it that or not call it that because your placenta is meant to slow down your digestion so that it can be sent to your baby so that your baby can digest it right well my placenta was not processing sugar very well like it more extreme than than normal I guess so therefore you have gestational diabetes well I had to just track my sugars and um I didn't have to take medicine praise the lord but anyways I had it this time and it really was like on the threshold so the majority of my sugar readings were fine anyways and my placenta came out like perfect at delivery anyways so there was really no reason for any hubba lubba but whatever um so I think the reason I was really tired this pregnancy was because of gestational diabetes so anyways that's why I was not podcasting as much or at all since October so the training was extremely busy my husband is super busy and so I was just trying to survive that month and then into the like winter season and through the winter through the spring I guess up till we had the baby baby Eden 
I was just trying to survive and I just didn't have the energy to podcast late at night and that has been my time to podcast and during the day when Everest would nap um I had to nap with him because I was so exhausted so I just didn't have the energy or the time to podcast because of the gestational diabetes now hopefully next time I get pregnant I will not have that so that I guess we'll probably have to nap during the day um but hopefully like at night when all the kids are asleep I can take time you know once a week to continue to podcast that is a wish that I'm gonna throw up there how Mary and I'm really hoping that that works and sticks because I really do love podcasting and I do love like sharing with you and talking and thinking of different ideas to just shoot the breeze with and things that I've been thinking about and things that catch my attention and yeah I mean it's a lot of work granted of course but like it's worth it and I just really enjoy like thinking of different things like I'm thinking of things all week long but um I love putting these things together and shooting the breeze with you so let's see um I I, there's so many things that I have that has that have been going on um I think a big reason that I wanted to get back into podcasting is because my brain is in kid mode all day long and I don't always get a chance to really share the things that have been on my brain with like people in my community maybe I do but sometimes I don't and if that I don't get the opportunity well lately I have not got the opportunity because I have a newborn and so we've been staying inside it's been like 90 degrees out so I really just have not had time normally I'm calling a couple different moms that I'm friends with maybe my sister's you know, different things like this, and I'm able to, like, verbalize all the things that I've been thinking of, and that I've been pondering, this and that, uh, but lately I have not been able to. We've had family visiting, which is amazing. Also means I am not, um, processing different things that are on my brain and that I would like to, so i.e you come in (laughs) anyways uh and also i just love this kind of outlet where um you're able to text me or call me or chit chat about these things when i'm making this outlet in this way like making this podcast so anyways i enjoy it i really really do and it's so much fun um the creative aspect of it and it's a really awesome outlet for me when um I don't always want to put a big video together you know granted I do love YouTube and I do want to keep putting those things together but I haven't as much time to edit and you know I really do love editing and I think of course it's the middle of the day um Everest is visiting his grandma right now so I am able to make this podcast during the day because obviously I'm not going to be doing very well at night but I might have to continue to do these mostly at night but maybe like right away once Everest goes to bed anyways um what was I even saying I'm mom braining it right now oh my gosh you oh goodness I'm literally blanking on what I was saying and I'm getting mesmerized by my microphone's colors. Um, goodness. Oh yeah. Anyways, I just love making podcasts and so mostly I don't have time to edit videos and I do love editing and I will be able to edit maybe once my kids are older maybe I'll have a little bit more time um I don't know and I have been actually thinking of putting together like a long form video on YouTube and editing it a little bit actually no 
I probably won't edit very much at all. I just want to put together a vlog and I think that would be really fun. Like a mom vlog of sorts with two kids. I don't know. Um, there was a lady at the restaurant we went to and she said, mom of two under three. <laughs> and I was like, that's true. I don't know. That didn't sound like, oh, like so, uh, what's the word? Impressive as like two under two. Like that's impressive for me. <laughs> or three under two or two under two but like two under three but maybe it is more impressive still because three-year-olds are crazy and if you have younger than that that's a little difficult anyways uh, yeah well let's let's move on um yeah so we had baby girl and her name is Eden Joy I kind of want to share that story a little bit I'm not going to share her birth story yet um I want to share how we got her name and or should I save that for the birth story that might go along more with the birth story e e e yes I'm going to save it for the birth story so stay tuned and listen to next week's episode when I share the birth story of Eden Joy Hertzberg next well okay I'm just going to share a little bit about her so and like what and like updates of what we've been doing so we had her and since we've had her it's been like a whirlwind we came home and it's kind of part of the birth story but it was like hailing on the way home and um it's just been like a crazy whirlwind since then like we have this new person in our family and we're just like trying to get used to what it's like having two kids and like you take him and I'll take her and go bring this stuff in and where do we put the car seats and I've been sitting in the middle of the two car seats and feeling guilty like oh we should have her in the middle but then like then he might like bug her or throw something and smack her or whatever I don't know but it just feels nice like that I can sit between and help them both, you know, in the back for a little bit when she needs stuff. I don't know. So we're just like trying to, we still haven't really gotten a rhythm because we came home and then our, my brother-in-law was leaving to go back to school. So we were spending a lot of time with him and with the family for the week. And then right after that, Caleb's dad came to visit. So then we've been with him for a week and um, it's just been one thing after another, which I love, honestly, don't get me wrong, because I heard this statistic on Instagram the other day that was like, the first week you come home, no, I should say it like this, the first week you come home from the hospital, you're supposed to be in bed, yeah, right, second week you should be on the couch, <laughs> No, that's not going to happen. Then the third week, you should just stay home. That's not going to happen for an extrovert. I am so not sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. There's no way I'm staying in bed for a whole week. And then the couch for the next week. And then just staying home. No, that's three whole weeks. That She just turned three weeks. That's like just now leaving the house. Now? For the first time? No, I've been out of the house like every single day no joke and we've been doing way too many things that I probably shouldn't be doing but I just can't help it like extrovert girls like need to get out and like do stuff and honestly it wouldn't be fair to my son who's two and a half like for real like what is he gonna do inside all day by himself if I'm supposed to stay in bed he's gonna come sit in bed with me no 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 it's just not gonna happen I just I don't know what they expect maybe if you have it's your first child maybe yeah sure that'll that'll work but second child no and third no and fourth never you know it's just not gonna work I'm sorry I'm just rambling now but um yeah so we have had her and then it's just we're just trying to get into a routine which we have not yet and we're going to get groceries tomorrow and it's just like every day that we put her in the car seat she doesn't really like it 
at first and if she's the slightest bit hungry she's like upset and um until she'll fall asleep then you have a little bit of time she will eventually fall asleep in the car seat but excuse me I'm just thinking about when she's gonna be like three months like how hard that's gonna be you know I don't know because Eris wasn't like a peach when he was three months in the car at this time so by the time he was three months he just was really difficult in the car and cried like the whole time he did not like being in the car it was really difficult and I honestly am like trying to go somewhere all the time like no joke all the time like want to be somewhere so it's kind of difficult if she doesn't want to be in the car because Everest right now is super chill in the car like he loves just chilling anywhere that we go and he's usually really good as long as he's got like his chocolate milk and a snack and a truck like he's gucci gang so anyways but he was not at three months like i think he was when he was eden's age but now now he's super chill and he's two and a half so it just took a long time i think he was good like by two or maybe one and a half he was still pretty good but like three and a month three months on till up to one or past one maybe one and a half maybe two he just wasn't good and i feel like i only recently noticed okay at two he's like legit chill in the car and it doesn't matter he doesn't fight really to get in the seat and get out get in he like can understand that we're going somewhere that we need to get in the car seat like he understands now so that's like super super nice um and then my parents also want to come visit so um there's that so we have like a a busy week at the ministry this week so thankfully nobody's coming this week but um there's like a lot of adjustment with like the heat and her and that I only realized like we took her to the pool one day and it was like 80 some degrees and then the next day I talked to somebody and they're like you know that babies can't regulate their own heat yet like we can sweat but they can't yet and I was like oh dang yeah I forgot but I was putting the umbrella on her and she was in the shade you know I'm like saying this but like um like they need like a fan or they need something on them to regulate their own heat because they just don't have the ability to yet and so you know these these type of things like I just haven't had a newborn for two and a half years so like I just forget all the little nuance the little things that you know when you're like a newborn mom or whatever like your newborn mom or whatever and I just haven't done it in a long time so we're just refreshing with these things um she goes through diapers sorry she goes through diapers like they're water i mean newborns don't drink water but you know what i mean they're just like she's just going through them like crazy which is insane that she even goes through them the way that she does because i really forgot that they do that but whatever um what else she sleeps so well and she almost sleeps a little too well because the first night i was like nursing every two hours and then i know the first night actually was like nursing every hour and i was like what's wrong but i realized later that my milk couldn't really come in so she was like trying to get my milk to come in and then the next night she was able i was able to like i had to wake her up every two hours but like she would have slept through had i not woken her up so that's kind of nice she will sleep like four hours at a time and i've let her and then she'll be like starving marvin but like yeah so that's nice i feel like she's gonna be able to sleep really really well which is great moving forward and um when i don't have to feed her every two hours like i can feed her every three or something then that's just gonna be really nice because she already like sleeps four hours at a time i think one time she even slept no i don't think she slept five but she did she does sleep four regularly which is really really nice and honestly i she probably would sleep four hours at a time during the no not during the day she doesn't do as well during the day she'll want to eat more often at first she didn't though she would sleep through and i would have to wake her up which i still have to wake her up but i mean she was like dead like asleep 
and I would have to like wake her out of like a super deep REM sleep to feed her and change her or whatever but anyways um there's so many so many things with her I could talk about probably next week um I'm just gonna move on a little bit I've been thinking a little bit about like I've been feeling like this pull and this tug on my heart um like this desire to be with the lord more honestly i haven't spent as much time with the lord since like being pregnant with eden and even having her and different things but i've been feeling like this super strong like like pull from the lord and knowing that I do, I need to spend time with him and like this strong desire to be with him, which I know is from him. And it's so interesting because I've heard, you know, people go through the revival. I've heard from a pastor recently, you know, like people go through revival and then they go through the the wilderness or whatever right after usually, but it's to pull them closer to the Lord, um, the wilderness. And so you know at first I was like I don't really get this I don't understand this but you know and I'm not sure that I fully I do right now but I definitely know that that is what happened to me like when I went to lifestyle like I went through revival in my own life and then right after me and everybody else (laughs) went through the wilderness you know where it feels like the Lord is just nowhere what, what which is not true and he's totally there but I recently spoke to a friend of mine and they said that what happened, what happens or what happened to me during a time is that I let the fire fade in my life for the Lord because of a circumstantial situation that happened to me. And it's totally true. Like I was completely in revival and in my own personal life and on fire for the Lord and nothing could stop it but then it did from what happened and a situation that I'm not going to get into but um a circumstantial thing which should never dictate how my relationship with it the Lord is but I let it happen and I have been pondering this for maybe a few years now, low-key. And um, a lot of the things that I've been thinking of along the lines of, like, when I get to a certain stage or when we move from here, wherever we're at now, I will go back into revival. Or when I get to the a better church, then we'll go back into revival. Or... I will do ministry or I will go out and preach the gospel or share my testimony or pray for the sick and the lost and see people healed again, minister to people on the streets when I'm doing better with my relationship with the Lord. But honestly, um, like all those things are really awesome, but I need to first and foremost get my relationship with the Lord like back to not even it's not like I want it to go back to where I was and and for a long time I really did want it to go back to what it was when I was back in revival in my heart you know and with the Lord but honestly it doesn't need to go back because everything that that happened to me and that who the Lord is and my relationship with him is still there. It's still alive. It hasn't gone away. It feels like it's gone away, but it's not. It's still a part of our history and part of our my relationship with the Lord. Same with yours. If you're in a wilderness and if you are were in revival at one point and now you feel like you're in a wilderness season, like it's not like anything has disappeared even though it feels like it as like your history with the Lord is still there. And you're still building that history. And so um I've been thinking like for for a long time I would go into the secret place it's not like I've never gone into the secret place for the past few years like of course I have but when I would go in 
and, 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 and intentionally meet with the Lord. Sometimes he's shown up with his presence and power, you know, but so, oftentimes it's just me in, in a room and he's there, but he's not like revealing himself with his almighty glory and power and whatever, whatever. Sometimes, oftentimes it's just me and my Bible and he's there, but he's not necessarily revealing himself as God and um it's just very ordinary and maybe he wants that for a reason you know maybe it's meant to be that way so that we can just trust him and just believe him and just love him and I think recently I was like not wanting to go spend time I remember talking to Caleb being like you know I don't want to go spend time with the Lord because I'm just feeling like I'm going to be disappointed when he doesn't show up and he said something really specific really um it it hit me and I didn't want it to hit me but it totally did um he said why don't you go in there and spend time oh I'm gonna cry why don't you go in there and spend time with him not for what you can get but what you can give him and ugh, I've heard that a million times but honestly it was something I really needed to hear and really needed to be reminded of because for a while I've been going in there to seek him for what I can receive not like a prayer request or whatever but just I was wanting to receive his presence I was wanting to experience like a revelation or receive uh, um, a big word from him or understanding or an underst- like understanding from a dream or whatever whatever like seeking him for what he can give me okay so honestly I'm really trying to make this work right now um, Eden was hungry so now I am holding her and kind of holding the mic, which I really don't need to, but this mic needs to be on a table and I'm not in a table room. Also, if you hear any like baby noises, this is why, because I'm holding her. Um, okay, so where was I? I started this before I noticed where I was at. So I had to stop for super abruptly because she was hungry and now we're back um what like I was saying before like seeking him for what he can give me and so um I just like reevaluated that and knew that I needed to seek him just to seek him just to be with him and oh gosh that sounds so um simple but honestly it was something I needed to hear and I needed to be reminded of that I just need to go and seek him to know more about him know more of who he is and just come to worship him and not expect a revelation not expect an encounter but just to be with him and and honestly that's really probably what I needed to hear and what I needed to oh dear girl okay let me turn this little light off um there Okay, she needed to be more in the shade. <laughs> Sounds like a zebra. She sounded like a zebra there for a sec. Um, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. This mom thing is like, yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, and I just said, like, and again today I was feeling that pull, like wanting, like the Lord, like wanting me to spend time with him and knowing that that's really what that's the most important thing of like what I need to do um and I need to spend that time with him you know it's it's I find it really difficult like as a mom like you barely get any free time to yourself and then you sometimes just want to do nothing you just want to sit and watch a movie or sit on your phone or read a book or listen to something and I think 
for me personally i just need to spend the time with the lord in the morning but if i don't get that in the morning then in the evening is when i really want like a break and i just want to do nothing or watch a movie or relax or talk or go meet up with somebody you know like i don't want to always go spend time with the lord which that sounds really sad and not good but it's true and so um because i'm just tired and i want a break and i haven't gotten a break all day most of the time so but sometimes i do and that's really sweet when i do get a break throughout the day you know but it doesn't always happen <laughs> anyways sorry i was just looking at eden and she was just looking back at me and smiling and that's so sweet um i think I wrote down, like, I wanted to talk about how to satisfy that yearning to be with the Lord, like, that desire. And I think, like, what I said just a little bit ago was kind of, oh, kind of my answer to that of, like, oh, I'm sorry, her little baby noises. Um, My answer to that is just that, like, Um, oh dear, she might get a little upset. Oh. Um, oh no, she's got toots, I'm sorry. Um, just, you know, going and spending time with him and not expecting anything. And getting out of the mindset of that expectation of like needing to have like this big revelation after spending time with him or needing a crazy encounter and his presence like filling the room so thick you know where you can't even stop laughing or move it doesn't always work out that way and not and and just getting away and out of the mindset of having that expectation that that that's supposed to happen every single time and and also finding this gratefulness like counting your blessings it sounds so cliche and weird and lame but like finding all the things that you're grateful for um uh it just like i was thinking about it the other day like just actually yesterday i think like think i was started thinking about all the things that i'm so grateful for and like i mostly was thinking of caleb eden and everest and like I just got this big smile on my face and I was just so happy like I felt like I was the richest person in the world like I have literally everything and and like I have everything and I just got so excited like like wanting to make this decision to be so joyful and like giddy and excited and happy every day of my life because I literally like like along with my relationship with the Lord like these people are like help me to understand like I literally have everything like I don't need anything else in my life and that I have it all with them um I wanted to share this story because I have been feeling I felt this this was um, maybe a couple months ago and this story it happened like when I was like oh no oh no she was um I was wanting to uh go hang out with people but then I felt like this the pull like the Lord wanting to spend time with me right and some of my friends wanted to paint like with this paint by number and so I decided to go paint with them instead even though I had felt like this like the call like the Lord being like this pull on my heart to go spend time with him and then the next night the same thing happened but I went and painted instead and did something else else with friends and then the third night I was like man no matter what comes up I am gonna spend time with the Lord because I was feeling it all day that I wanted to spend time with him right oh sorry we got toots um so then um i had forgotten but it was like a bingo night or something where friends wanted to go play bingo and 
I was like, dang, again? So I think I went, I think I didn't go to bingo that night and I spent time with the Lord. And, but it was a really hard decision. Like I really wanted to go. And then um, last minute, I just decided not to go. And I spent time with the Lord. And, and the thing is, so three nights before I had the first night, I felt the tug, like the pull on my heart to spend time with the Lord, right? I, I went and painted instead. That day, I got the craziest pain in my neck where I couldn't move it. Like I, it was stuck and I couldn't, I could turn it all the way to the right, but I could not turn it to the left at all without having like this crazy pain in my neck. And, um, so it was like stiff kind of like, it was like, I could only move it like a little bit to the left and definitely couldn't see over my shoulder if I was like driving or something. Like when you do like look over in the blind spot, like I could not do that. Um, Sorry if you can hear her hitting my headphones with her head. She's maybe she's a little hungry, but um so then on the third night I went and spent time with him and I was just like worshiping him and then all of a sudden it hit me like Holy Spirit like hit me and he said, "Why are you such a stiff-necked per- like people?" And I was like, "Wait, what?" And then it hit me like I just repented for uh, like him hearing him say he wanted to spend time and me just like ignoring it right and then the pain went away in my neck and I could completely move it to the left and to the right all the way back and look in the blind spot in like if you're in a car but like it was gone instantly and I had been dealing with that for like three days it was just like crazy because well sorry the lord just spoke to me like in that moment it was nuts because I had just was resisting him so much and he just wanted to spend time it just it just shook me anyways but I had been like being really stubborn and not wanting and just resisting wanting to spend time with him and and um and I just want to encourage you like just go and do it sometimes it's a discipline but it can turn into a delight I heard um, Michael, no, not Michael Cooley, Eric Gilmore say, like, discipline turns into delight. And I just really, that's always really stuck with me. Because maybe sometimes it starts out as a discipline, but then you get into a rhythm and it becomes, like, a delight to be with him and a delight to spend time with him. And you get into the, you guys get into this rhythm of meeting and there's nothing else. Like, that's the highlight of your day, you know, like, truly. Um, okay. one more thing I just before I wanted to wrap up this week's podcast I wanted to talk about um there was something I watched this movie called The King's Speech I think that's what it's called or A King's Speech or The King's Speech it's super old but there's something that somebody said that I've been thinking about and I wanted to just mention it in today's podcast just because I had a lot of random things I wanted to talk about today but this was one of them that um like I said earlier in the podcast that I had gone through like a revival period in my life and then right after that went through like a wilderness season where it was completely dry and it felt like the Lord wasn't there even though he was and like I think there was part part of that season like that where the transition there's a season in between my revival and the wilderness where I went through like a lot of pain and a lot of like hurt from like friends and people in ministry and there was just a lot of rejection in that time um and it has stuck with me ever since this was like a few years ago and like several years ago I should say not a few like several and um it has been like a a big process getting through that and getting through that disappointment of like why lord did you let this happen to me um type of thing 
and all of that and so one thing like what one thing like what i watched when i watched the king's speech i don't know if you've seen the movie but in the movie it's based off king george the sixth like life in england and he had a speech impediment and he was going he was like a duke of york at one point and then he became the king and he had a speech impediment and then he went to like a speech therapist and he like really helped him and he helped him through like like he went through trauma as a young kid and then as an adult it like he helped him through that so then he wouldn't have a speech there impediment or whatever and he like had to give this wartime speech that was to the whole nation or whatever and this guy really helped him it was based on a true story and so when I saw this there was a line that the speech therapist said to um his name was Birdie Lionel said to Birdie and that's what um this is a really what happened or whatever and it's based on your story or whatever and he said you know you don't have to be afraid of what happened to you when you were five and that really hit me because there was stuff that happened in this period the transition period from revival to wilderness in that time I went through a lot of rejection and a lot of pain and a lot of um fear um entered into my life that was never there before and um yeah these things didn't happen to me when I was five but the Lord spoke to me in that moment I almost feel like crying because the Lord spoke to me in that moment and he said you don't have to be afraid of what you were afraid of back then several years ago you don't have to be afraid of that anymore like that is past and that's not who you are anymore and Those things are not in your life and those people are not in your life. And you don't have to ever be afraid of that anymore. You are in the Lord. You are in me. And you don't have to worry about that at all anymore. And that's not in your life anymore. And I just felt really... I I, I feel like there's a lot more to it. And I feel like I want to unpack it more. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about it in in this segment. But I found it really just freeing in a way. Because a lot of times things that happened to us in the past hold us down for the rest of our lives. Like in a lot of people's lives. Like it keeps them for their entire life. Things that happen to them when they're a kid. Or it affects them forever. And this didn't happen when I was a kid, but it has severely affected me for the last several years. And something that I've been working through for a a long time, and now I just feel like it was like completely wiped away. I don't know why, but maybe the Lord did something in that moment yeah anywho I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast and we'll see you next week thank you so much for listening thanks for listening to this week's podcast It was my pleasure. Please subscribe and leave a review. It means so much. And share this with a friend. Thanks for listening. Love you. Bye-bye.